Hi, how's it going? I'm Marlene. Thanks for wandering by. So here we are in the third Deccan of Aries. So welcome to um, another video from Deacon Walk 2023. Um, and this video is all about um, the third face or deacon of Aries. Um, it is Venus and Aries, um, the four of wands. Now, before I launch into all of that um, uh, discussion, uh, let me just remind you, for those of you that are here for the first time, um, well, not remind you, introduce you for those of you that may be here for the first time that have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, I'm Marlene. I'm a poet and a tarot reader, and I have embarked upon a decanic walk or journey um, where I am, and I've invited uh, folks along with me to follow the Deccans and the relationship to tarot correspondences. If you want more information about what that is, what is a Deccan, etc., I'm gonna link for you. It's gonna be there, actually. I'm backwards. Um, in the cards, the um, my introduction and the playlist um, as well. I, I might have that just in the description box below of all of the Deacon, sorry, Deccan. <laughs> I looked it up on Google, guys. I looked up how to pronounce it and Google says Deccan, so, but you know, I keep going back and forth. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm gonna have, for those of you that are brand new here, um, information in the description box below as to uh, what we're doing here. Also, for those of you that are interested in joining along, you can join anytime and please do. Um, for me so far, what I've been learning, um, these themes, ideas, topics, tarot correspondences, astrology, um, there are, you know, fixed dates. Um, there are certain things that have to do with like the energy that's happening at, the t at this particular time, but I really do think that you can pop in and join in anytime you'd like. Um, so please do. If you would like to, to join us um, on this uh, deck and walk, you can subscribe to me. I'm going to be making, I'm still in the momentum guys. So I'm gonna be making videos, um, but I can't promise every single deck and <laughs> every time we turn over that I'm gonna make a new one. Um, I, I imagine that the momentum will kind of peter out, but will ebb and flow and you guys will come you know, along with me in that ebb and flow. In any case, um, you can subscribe to me. I'm going to either make a video or a community post each time the Deccan turns over, which is about roughly every 10 days. Um, currently, the Deccan of, of, um, that we're starting <laughs> is um, the third Deccan of Aries, which is from April 10th through April 19th, April 10th through April 19th or 11th, April 10th or 11th through April 19th. So what can, you know, I, I might be off by a day or two, but that's roughly what we've got going on. Sorry. Um, so you can subscribe to me look for my community posts and or um, you can also follow us along in the Boho Tarot Facebook group that is run by my friend Don Michelle who is, has let us come on over there to add discussion, share readings, talk more about um, this deck and walk so we can build community there. All right, I think that's all the businessy stuff. Um, just, you know, my typical disclaimers about myself. I am not an astrologer um, and this is a learning journey journey for me. I view things through a metaphorical and symbolic lens. And like I said, I think that these themes and topics are timeless. Um, and honestly, I'm mostly interested in how this, how this, these ideas and this can relate to my personal life and how I can use it for personal self growth and insight, you know? Um, yeah. So without further ado, let's talk about the third uh, Deccan of Aries. That's going to be Venus 
in Aries <laughs> and it corresponds to the Four of Wands. Start by looking at the Four of Wands in the Rider Waite Smith, which is probably the image that most of us are familiar with. So this is from the Divine uh, Deck and Tarot by Reese Marin. I've shared this um, on the channel before, and as always, I'll have links in the description box below where you can find it. This is a super handy um, deck because it has um, our deck in um, descriptions right on the card along with the image that we're so familiar with. So yeah, April 11th through April 20th is what this one says for our deck in time period. Um, and so here we have the four of wands, the title, this is the, um, the hermetic title, which is the Lord of perfected work. That's where that comes from, the Four of Wands. We have the Waitsmith image that you know. And then this is our, our Deccan correspondence. So we are in the third Deccan of Aries. And it's Venus is the ruling planet of this Deccan. So it's Venus and Aries and cardinal fire. So Aries is cardinal fire. All that means is that um, cardinal just means that Aries is cardinal because it's the beginning of the spring season. So when we move into um, the next zodiac sign, it's going to be um, a, a fixed sign <laughs> um, because it'll be the fixed sign for spring, which comes in the middle. And then the last sign of that season is mutable. So anyway, cardinal, all cardinal means is that it is the start of the spring season. It's the, the um, first fire <laughs> sign here. Um, okay, so we have Venus in Aries. So that means that this card corresponds, has two major cards that are attached to it. And so Aries, we've seen, is our emperor, okay? Let me put him here. <laughs> Um, our emperor is Aries, and the this this Deccan like completely blew my mind when I found out, um, you know, that it's Venus and Aries because Venus is the empress. So in this Deccan, we have the emperor and the empress. The empress is hanging out in Aries in this Deccan, and it's like amazing when. For me, who understands and has been working with the tarot for a minute, <laughs> this card is a themes of union, celebration, milestones, coming home, weddings is another like one of those like, um, you know, keywords or things that you see pop up all over the place. And no wonder, because when you have the couple, <laughs> the, um, you know, the pair of the emperor and the empress, um, the, their union is in the um, is in the Four of Wands. Um, I'm going to read to you from a couple of the books that I have as well, but something that um, I think both, I think many people have pointed this out in, in the text that I've been reading, but Susan Chang in 36 Secrets, um, that's the book that many of us are using um, to follow along this deck and walk. Um, says that you can, if you, if you um, look, you can you could think of these two characters in here as the emperor and the empress there, right there in the card. Isn't that interesting? I just thought that was really cool. So many of us think of the themes around the four of wands um, in the Wait Smith tradition as, you know, a milestone, a cause for celebration. Um, but we think of fours as well as structure, um, um, you know, we're almost halfway through or we've, we've hit not, yeah, we're almost halfway through and we've hit like this mile marker, this milestone, this place of, um, you know, completion, which I'm getting ahead of myself talking about the Thoth deck, but it makes sense that we see the union of the mother and the father, the emperor and the empress, you know, here in this card, which I think is, is amazing. Um, and, you know, you think about those different 
opposite aspects of those two coming together because the emperor and the empress can be looked at as the divine feminine, the divine masculine. Um, yeah, it's just, it's so cool. <laughs> I just love, I love learning this. So here we have in our um, Thoth deck, I, I just recently trimmed let me just show you really quick because I want you to see. I trimmed my Thoth and I edged it in um, in this brown and I'm like obsessed with using it. So this is a trimmed Thoth, just so you know, um, because it, it would have um, borders around it and the, um, the title would be underneath here. And the title for the Four of Wands in the Thoth deck is Completion. And here again, we see the, um, the Emperor and the Empress represented because you see the Ram and the Dove. And that is the rep those are the representations of the Emperor and the Empress. We have our astrological glyphs in the Thoth, the sign for Venus in Aries. And coming together, <laughs> I'm gonna read a little bit to you from um, the Gerd Ziegler Tarot, Mirror of the Soul, because that for me has been really, really um, a really wonderful resource in the Deccans. But anyway, that's the Thoth card. Let me show you just again real quick. Uh, we looked at the Emperor before in the Thoth. And then this is the Empress in the Thoth Tarot. So something else that it made me think of, along with, you know, their union um, in completion here um, is also the lover's card because the lover's card in the Thoth Tarot has a depiction. It's my, it's my favorite card probably um, in this entire, in the Thoth. Um, and it's a very significant, significator kind of card to me because it's the Gemini card. We'll be seeing this again when we get to the Gemini Deccans. But in any case, um, the Lovers is a depiction of the Emperor and the Empress, um, their union, their marriage, their wedding. Um, a lot of a lot of resources I've read, you know, allude to that in here. And then that's supposed to be the hermit that's presiding over their marriage. I just thought it was another cool little, you know, thing to throw in there. Although the lovers is not involved in this particular Deccan, I just thought it was cool to, you know, to bring them in. In this Deccan, you know, specifically we have the, it's the four, oh, sorry, the four of wands, the four of wands, completion or the Lord of Perfected Work. Um, so in if you're reading in 36 Secrets or following along with Susan Chang's blog, which is free, um, I, I leave you the links to that below. Um, then she talks a little bit about the, um, you know, the where we've come from because we came from Mars in Aries, then the sun in Aries. So we came from like a conquering perspective, dominion in the two of wands. And then in the three of wands, we moved into um, like a, like the government, like a benevolent government. Um, for me, it was about like the path to happiness with the sun in Aries. And now this is a quote by Susan Chang, a ritual celebration that crowns and consecrates a sovereign's reign. So if you're thinking of it in those like leadership terms that we started from the beginning, like the, you know, the the conqueror, the, um, you know, the establishing government. And then here we have, you know, the union of the king and the queen, the emperor, and the empress, um, for, you know, for that. She talks about that. Um, she talks a little bit about the astrology. And like I said, I'm not an astrologer, but I've been you know, talking about with you the dignities, which the deacons are dignity. But in any case, the, um, the, uh, okay, because Venus rules the, the, the deacon, so this is about how Venus 
is behaving when she's in Aries. You know how Venus feels <laughs> when she's in Aries. I'm, I'm talking about like people, but that's how it makes sense to me. So because Venus rules the, the Deccan, she has a chamber, an apartment <laughs> here, but in both of Mars' houses, she is also in detriment, okay? So she's not, um, she's not exalted. Like when we did the last Deccan, the sun in Aries was exalted there, was an honored guest. Um, Venus is in detriment here. So her halo has dimmed and her powers have abated. Um, she is, <laughs> um, she is, um, she's not in her happy place, but she's going to throw a, uh, one hell of a party. Um, Susan Chang, I'm laughing because Susan Chang is quoting her astrologer friend who says that um, she spends like a drunken sailor. So like apparently here in, and it makes sense that um, she's reached like a celebratory milestone on a much longer and harder road. And that's one of the ways that we think of the Four of Wands as well. Um, we think of the Four of Wands as like just, we've just reached this sort of like plateau area. You think of the other, you can think of the other fours that way too. Um, the Four of Swords as like the rest, that kind of thing, um, when you take a look at the fours. But yeah, um, let me see. Oh, and I wanted to share with you what Gerd Ziegler says. Um, in the mirror of the soul. And, and this is specifically about the Thoth tarot, but I feel like this makes sense across the board in terms of um, the, the idea of the Four of Wands or Venus and Aries, which is what we're paying attention to. So, um, quote from, from Gerd Ziegler. Um, oh, some, some of the key words and themes, uh, Venus and Aries, completion, unity, possibility of new beginnings. And then I added those of like celebration, milestones, um, you know, a mile marker along a, a, a tough or a longer journey. Um, okay, so here he says, Venus symbol of beauty and love combines with Aries, the principle of new beginnings. The heart pushes forth and seeks the development of the beautiful in new directions. Before the new can arise, the old must be complete. The conflict between opposites must be resolved in a way which will further you on the way to your highest goal. So this is what stood out to me the most. This is the takeaway that I think I, ha I can have in understanding this Deccan. This is about, you know, beauty um, in new directions. These two opposites have to come together in some way to completion, to create completion so that you can move forward on to the next, right? Um, the next mile marker in your journey. Like if you're looking at the wands journey <laughs> or you're looking at your life. I mean, it's for me a metaphor. So when we're looking at the um, Venus and Aries and we're taking into account those opposites of the emperor and the empress or how you know mother father divine masculine divine feminine um you know just these kind of opposite energies um and you know still in that vein of like ownership over your own life's course um especially when we're in this fire suit and this, this idea of, you know, going after pursuing um, your life purpose, your, you know, your following your passion and creativity. That's another part that I've been saying throughout this. Um, that's, that feels really significant to me um, <clears throat> in putting these two together. Um, and I created a spread um, that I'm going to, in just a moment, I'm gonna flip the camera over and I'm gonna demo that particular spread for you here. Um, and you can try it out as well. I think um, for me, it's about kind of like 
combining these aspects of these two opposites to complete um to complete some to completion to union to ce to celebrate something about myself so then I can take that and move on um and continue on you know not necessarily move on but continue on um towards you know whatever it is that I'm working towards um anyway so we'll get to that but first I wanted to show you just really quickly um the Picatrix uh, uh Deacon so I have this deck that I've shown you the Picatrix Deacons that I got um, from Etsy. So the Picatrix is an ancient astrological text um, and it describes the Deccans. Now for me, this one, this image kind of, um, it, it, it's a little bit um, curious to me, puzzling. The first two sort of felt a, in alignment with what the Golden Dawn then did with the, with the Deccan depiction or yeah, well, I mean, essentially, the the this is a Deccan depiction, um, and this is a Deccan depiction, right? Um, so, from the ancient astrological text, the Venus and Aries, this third face of Aries is here's the so we have Venus and Aries, uh, the third face of Aries. So it says here on the little pamphlet that came with the deck. Um, and this is, you know, a translation of the Picatrix. The third face of Aries is a man in red holding a gold bracelet who wants to do good but cannot. As a talisman, Cupid's arrow, ensnarement, compulsion. So I find that interesting. Maybe this speaks a little bit more to the shadow side or the reversal of the four of wands so like um an inability to unite an inability to do good um because you would imagine that the empress and the emperor coming together would be good like a good benevolent rulership you would hope right that union that celebration i don't know maybe that is a way that we can look at it. Um, this is an interesting image and we have Cupid um, and the man in red. Over and over, we are told of a man dressed in red with a gold bracelet. He is Aries and Aphrodite is trying to give him a wardrobe makeover. <laughs> he humors her for now. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's Susan Chang's um, kind of putting together, you know, the, the, the idea of the Picatrix, Aphrodite being, you know, Venus emperor, uh, empress in that, in that, and Cupid is in there too. So Cupid is the, um, or Eros, right? Is the, um, son of Venus or Aphrodite, same sort of names, uh, same, same, uh, goddess, <laughs> different names, um, with the different Roman or Greek, I believe. But like I told you, I'm not a mythology expert either, but those I know, uh, pretty, pretty standard. Anyway, so I'm so excited. This one was just really, really cool to me. It totally blew my mind because it's like, of course, of course, the emperor and the empress coming together have the, you know, result in the four of wands. Like, of course, that's why it's so often depicted as a wedding. Like, it's just that just mind blown and it was really, really cool. So now what we'll do is, is I'm gonna flip the camera over and I'm gonna just, you know, really briefly demonstrate the um, the spread that I created for you to try out that I'm gonna do uh, for this particular Deccan. All right, so let's get to that. Okay, so here we are um, at the car, at the Deacon, um, spread for Aries three. So these are the cards that I pulled out purposefully that are a part of our Deacon. So we have the four of wands, which is our Deacon card. And then we have the two majors that correspond to this Deacon, Venus and Aries. So I pulled out the Empress and the Emperor. And this is all from my little pocket thought. Um, so cute, right? It's perfect <laughs> for this type of thing on camera. So my pocket thoth, um, I pulled out these ahead of time. And then just personally, I like to have the lover's card. 
um, as part of this, just as, you know, cause it's a, it's an important card for me. And I do feel like it also represents the union of the emperor and the empress. And for this particular reading, I wanted to use Oracle as well. Now you can use one tarot deck, several tarot decks, tarot and Oracle, just Oracle, whatever you'd like to do. I'm using, um, um, and this is just a, this is just a, like a, de a demonstration of the reading. I'm going to be using a tarot deck and a couple of oracles. Um, but for this particular, um, demonstration for you all, I pulled one oracle deck out and this is the Roots and Wings mini. I'll, I'll leave a link to it below. Um, and what we're going to do with the oracle and you can use tarot, you can use whatever you'd like. Personally, I'm using Oracle. So what I want to do in this spread is I want to I want to um, pull out cards that signify or that are related to the qualities that I have right now that are Empress qualities and, um, and things going on, you know, but, but qualities really qualities in me at this moment that correlate to the Empress. And then I also want to pull a couple of cards. You can do as many as you like. I'm just going to do two. A couple of cards that represent my emperor-like qualities right at this moment. Okay? So the first part is to grab an oracle. And you can use a different one for the empress and the emperor. Um, or you can use the same one. Whatever you'd like. We're going to just use the Roots and Wings mini. Um, and we're going to pull two cards for the Empress-like qualities, and two cards for the Emperor qualities that we have right now. So for our Empress-like qualities, we have Rise and Good Fortune. And for our Emperor qualities, we have Home. and potential. Oh, that's really cool. So my mind is already oh. buzzing. Now in the center, what I wanted to do um, is, so we have our Empress qualities, we have our Emperor qualities, and the Four of Wands is about unifying and finding completion between these two opposites in order to, you know, go in new directions. We have to come together and unite and complete in order to continue on our path. And so for me, um, the qualities of the Empress and the qualities of the Emperor, the main question is, what completes me? How do I, you know, real, how do I unify these ideas? What completes me? And we're going to shuffle our Thoth and I'm going to use Tarot for this to bring it all together. And so the Six of Swords together is what completes these ideas. And so then I would, you know, work on, work on combining all of this and do my reading. So again, we have our pulled card, our, our chosen cards. We have um, the Four of Wands, the Empress and the Emperor. And then I used an Oracle deck to come, you know, to pick out two qualities of the Empress that I'm embodying right now, two qualities of the Emperor that I'm embodying right now, or you or whomever's doing the reading, and then what completes me? What completes me? Okay, so there you have it. That is our spread and discussion, um, kind of jumping off point for the third um, Deacon of Aries, uh, Venus and Aries, the Four of Wands. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Please um, go to the description box below to find links, to find um, the PDF for this particular spread. Um, join us at Boho Tarot Facebook group. And please tell me, you know, how things are going for you along this Deacon Walk. Would love to know more about transitioning from you know, sun in Aries now to Venus in Aries. What does that mean for you? Um, and please feel free to, you know, 
uh, share with me any other resources or things that you are working with. If you make a video or um, or post in Boho Tarot, use the hashtag DeaconWalk2023 so that we can all find you and um, find your post or video and we can all discuss together. Thanks uh, again, uh, as always, for sticking around with me. And I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful day and a beautiful, wonderful uh, third de decan of Aries. Bye now.